Today I'm going to show you how to make Creative Kiwi's Notebook version 2 and uh, it's unusual because we're going to be using two different size hoops for this. So I'm going to start off with running through what we're going to need. Um, I've got wash away stabilizer, I've got cutaway that I'm going to float on top, this is purely optional, this is my preference. I've got my five, uh, 4x4 hoop, my 5x7, matching bobbin and thread, my masking tape of course, um, cam snap set tool and some cam snaps, my scissors and my fabrics and batting all cut to size. When you're making this book cover you need to make sure that you stitch everything in the right order and it starts off with the tab, then you go on to the back, the spine, then the front. If you don't stitch them in this order it won't go together. So I'm going to start off by hooping my um, wash away stabilizer and I'm going to be floating some cutaway on top. Um, I like to do this because the wash away doesn't last forever so by using cutaway it just leaves something to support the stitching. This is massive on a 4x4 hoop. <laughs> Let's trim a little bit off. Okay. So I'm now going to pop that in my machine and I'm going to stitch round number one which is going to give me the outline. I'm going to turn my hoop over and I'm going to place the backing fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Then I'm going to turn it over to the front. I'm going to lay my um, wash away stabilizer down and then my batting and then my fabric on top of that. I just need to make sure that the outline is covered by the fabrics and then once again I'm going to tape this in place. I'm going to pop this in my machine and I'm going to stitch round number two. Next is the quilting, round number three. If you don't want to do this, just skip through it. Now I'm going to cut away all the excess uh, cutaway stabilizer, batting and fabric from both front and back. And I'm going to start on the back so that it doesn't get forgotten. I'm now going to pop that back in my machine and stitch round number four which is going to do the decorative edge. So now it's time to free this from the hoop so I'm going to turn this over and just trim around the edge. Okay. That's the last use we've got for our 4x4 hoop. Now we're going to swap over to the 5x7. I'm going to start with hooping my wash away stabilizer. I'm going to put that in my machine and I'm going to stitch round number one of the back file and that's going to give me my placement outline. And that's the outline done. I'm going to slide a sheet of paper under here just so you can see what I'm talking about. You've got some placement points on here. These ones here are going to be for the um, closer that you did earlier and these ones here are going to be for the flap that you insert the notebook into that holds it all to, to the cover. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend these lines just so that I can see them once I've got some fabrics over the top. Just like that. Okay, now that I've extended my lines I'm going to place my batting over the top. I'm going to pop that in my machine and stitch round number two. I'm going to trim away all the excess batting. Okay, I'm now going to turn this over 
Now I'm going to place my fabric over the top and I'm going to tape it in place so that it doesn't move during stitching. I'll pop that in my machine and stitch around number three to attach it. As I didn't place my um, cutaway stabilizer down earlier, I'm going to put it down now and I'm going to place my fabric over the top and then stick it in place. I now pop that in my machine and stitch round number three. Next is round four and that's the stippling stitch. Next we're going to place this tab down and it's got to go between those two lines there. I'm going to trim this fabric up a little bit just so that I can see what I'm doing. That's better. Okay, so I'm going to place this here with the stitch line over this stitch line here and now I can tape it in place and try and get it straight. There's nothing more annoying than getting it all squiffy and once it's stitched it annoys you forever. Right, okay, that's fine. Next I'm going to place the flap um, and again we're going to use the guidelines at the top and bottom here so I'm going to trim this up a little bit. You can't trim too much because you've got to leave at least a quarter of an inch seam allowance for this. So I'm just going to take it easy there. Okay so these lines here we're now going to line this up and this is a rounded edge here. I'm going to line that up to there like so. Pop some tape down so that it can't move. And I like to put tape anywhere where two fabrics overlap so that the foot of my machine can't get caught in it. Okay, I'm now going to pop that in my machine and stitch round number five and that's going to secure it. I'm now going to remove the tape. And I can free this from the machine now. And we need to trim this up so I'm going to turn this over and I've got a ruler here and all I'm going to do is draw myself a line all the way around to trim to. And I'm using a quarter of an inch. You can use quarter to a half, it's entirely up to you. Okay. Now on this edge here, which is the side opposite the, the um, flap, we need to trim that as close as we possibly can to the stitch line because that's going to be our join onto the spine. So I'm going to start off with that. If I turn it over, we can all see what's going on. And then I'm just going to follow these lines all the way around. My corners I cut quite close because, um, but I do them afterwards. I find that I get a neater corner when I turn it out the right way if I do that. But I'm not going to do it just yet. Okay, so that's our back finished. Next, we're going to hoop some more stabilizer, wash away stabilizer and we're going to do the spine. So I've loaded the file into my machine already. So let's get this hooped up. I put that in my machine and stitch round number one which is going to give me the outline again. I've put my sheet of paper underneath again so that you can see what I'm doing. You'll notice that the outline is off center that's perfectly normal it's because when you go to join your backing it's going to join at the side there so it needs the room to be able to stitch the lining on so I'm going to place my cutaway stabilizer over the top of the outline and my batting on top and I'm going to pop that in my machine and stitch round number two I'm going to trim away all the excess batting and of course the cutaway stabilizer underneath that. And now I'm 
going to place my fabric over the top and I'm going to tape it down. I'll put a little bit on the sides just to stop them lifting because it's rather narrow. Okay, I'm now going to stitch round number three. And next is the quilting, which is round number four. I've changed my thread to hot pink because green on green just wouldn't be seen. So I'm now going to stitch um, the word notes down the spine and that's round number five. So it's time to do some more trimming and we're going to trim up the, the excess fabric along the left hand side here. Okay, that's fine. So now we're going to join this piece here. Now you've got a line of stitch in here and you've got a line of stitch in here and you want to get these lines of stitching lined up as well. So it needs to go line up all the way around. So I'm going to overlap this one on top of that one. And I'm just going to tape that in place. Same this side. And I'm just going to put a couple of pins in here just to hold it flat so that it can't move. Word of warning about pins, make sure you always put them well away from the um, stitch line. Mine seem to be blunt today, so let's get some other ones, that's better. Okay, so now um, the next round of stitching is going to do the placement line markings along here and it's going to do the um, zigzag stitching to join these two pieces here. So that was uh, round number six that's just given me the placement and now it's round number seven which is going to join along here. Okay now is a good time to check that you haven't got any fabric poking through the zigzag stitching. If you have you can just quickly run an unpicker through it and sorry my cat's making noise in the background um, um, you can run a, an unpicker through it and just redo it um, mine appears to be okay so I'm going to carry on with round number eight which is going to do the satin stitch decorative um, stitching over the join I've removed all the tape and pins this little mark that um, your machine put in a minute ago that is going to help you place your um, lining fabric and you want to place it to the left of that mark as long as it falls to the left everything will be fine and you're going to place your fabric face down so I'm going to pop mine there and tape it in place Let's move that up a little bit and rounds number nine and ten are going to secure these number nine is going to stitch down here and number ten is going to secure the top so i'm now going to pop it in my machine and do round number nine and now number ten okay so off we go again for the last time i've hooked my stabilizer and i'm going to pop this into my machine and stitch around number one which is the outline okay so I've got my trusty piece of paper again these little lines here top and bottom I'm just going to extend them as I did before 
just makes it easier for you to see for lining up later okay I'm now going to place my batting over the outline and also I'm going to slip some cutaway stabilizer underneath don't want to forget that again I'm now going to pop that in my machine and stitch round number two so next our fabric goes on again and I'm going to take that down I'll put that back in my machine and stitch round number three to secure it next is round number four which is the stippling quilting I'm going to get rid of this tape and I forgot to trim up the batting underneath so that's going to make things a little bit harder <laughs> never mind okay I'm going to trim up close to the edge here for starters and I'm going to trim away the, the batting here I'm just going to pull that back out of the way and take care not to cut my top fabric of course okay problem sorted so next we come to joining our previous pieces to this one and we're go it's going to go along this edge so with the uh, lining folded back once again we're going to line up all the stitching so that it sits um, square and this stitch line here has got to go over the top of this stitch line here as well I'm just going to pop a couple of pins in so that it can't move at all keeping my pins well away from the edge of course well away from the edge, well away from the stitch line <laughs> so I've got no pin here or along here where the um, it's going to stitch and join okay I'm going to put that back in my machine and stitch round number five and that's going to do the zigzag along here to join it I've had a look and checked that there's no fabric poking through and there isn't so I'm now going to uh, stitch round number six which is the decorative top stitching okay next it's going to stitch um, the circle um, badge here if you don't want this then you can skip colors 7 8 9 and 10 and go on to the the top badge if you don't want that one either then you skip right through to color 15 if you don't know how to do that look it up on your machine manual it should tell you or have a look on YouTube for um, a tutorial I'm going to do something a little bit different with this one I'm actually going to stitch both and but with a difference I'm going to put a little tiny pocket make a little tiny pocket out of the circle one at the bottom here and I'm going to have the top one as it as it should be so I'm going to pop this into my machine and stitch round number seven and the reason why I'm doing both is to show you both you know how they're done so okay so I've now got my placement line here normally you'd put your fabric straight over the top like that and then stitch the stitch down round but I'm going to be a little bit different I'm going to place it oh, about two-thirds of the way up trying to make sure that I get that straight um, and when it stitches it down and I cut away it's going to leave a little tiny pocket I don't <laughs> I doubt whether it serve a purpose but for a decoration 
Okay, so let's tape that down like that. I'm going to pop that in my machine and stitch round number eight, which is going to secure my fabric. Okay, so I've removed the, the uh, tape and I'm now going to trim up around the edge of the stitch line. I'm now going to stitch round number nine and that's going to do the decorative satin stitch around the edge here. Next would have been the monogram letter. Um, I'm not stitching that uh, because I've got the pocket now so I don't need it. Um, so I'm going straight on to round number 11 which is going to give me my placement line for the top label area. Okay so now I'm going to add my fabric over the placement area and tape it down so that it doesn't move. I'll put that in my machine and stitch round number 12 and that's going to do the stitch down. Okay, you know the routine by now. I'm going to trim this up. Okay. I'm now going to pop that into my machine and stitch round number 13, which is going to do the decorative stitching around the edge. Next is round 14 and that's going to be the wording and in this case it's notes. So now we come to add the other flap and I'm just going to trim off just a little bit of fabric like I did before so that I can see my line properly. I can see it at the top, it's just at the bottom here, I couldn't see it. So now I'm going to place this with the fold towards the centre and line it up to those lines and tape it in place. Okay, I'm now going to put that back in my machine and stitch round number 15 which is going to secure it. Okay, time to remove all the tape and pins. And I'm going to pull my lining back over flat and tape that in place. Oops, I picked everything up on the, on the table here. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to tape that down here and put my pin back in here. I just want it to lay flat, that's why I'm using the pins. Okay, that's nice and flat now. And I'm now going to stitch round number 16, which is going to stitch along the bottom here. And then after that, the last round, which is 17, across the top. Okay, I'm going to remove the pins. And the tape. And I can now remove this from the hoop. And now I'm going to trim up everything as I did before. And I'm going to start with this piece of stabiliser. And I'm going to take my ruler and pencil again. And go around the edge so that I get a nice, neat, even edge. And I'm going to trim across the corner here so that I haven't oops I haven't got too much bulk when it comes to turning out um, turning it out the right way. I don't want to cut too close to the stitching so that I I cut into the stitching but and I'm going to do the same with the other edge that I left earlier as well. Okay, so now I can cut that up. Okay. 
Okay. So now I can turn it out the right way. Ah, I've got a bit more hair to trim up. It's just the excess left from securing the lining, so I'm just going to trim that off a little bit so that it doesn't get in the way and make life difficult. Okay, and now I can turn it out the right way. These will now flip over. And I can remove my tape from there. <laughs> okay, so all that remains now, I'm going to give this a quick press so that it lays nice and flat for, and I'll show you how to put the cam snap on. Um, it's easier if it's all sitting flat. Okay, for the cam snaps, I've got my setting tool and there are four parts to each um, snap um, and um, you've got the male, you've got the female and the two pieces that attach them onto the fabric and what happens is when this sits in the cup it, it pokes through the hole in each of those and as you squeeze it, it flattens that point and then they're fixed forever. So first things first, I've put my notebook inside the cover and I'm going to line it up, my tab, where it's got to go. I've got my chalk pen here and I'm going to position my pen where I want it on this one mark it, lift it and then come down again immediately underneath and that way one will sit on top of the other without being squiffy. Okay so I can take this out now. I've got my sharp point stubby tool and without stubbing my fingers I'm going to make a hole in the fabric so that I can push the um, point through. So on this one I want the the button part as I call it on the uh, front of my uh, tab and I'm just going to push that through so that the spike is protruding right through and then I'm going to put the mail on so next this sits on the point like so oops it will in a minute <laughs> and then the button part sits in the black cup and the other part goes over the top like so and then you squeeze nice and hard and the piece is set that's not going to come off for this piece, I need to open this up a little bit and once again, oops, take my stubby tool and make a hole, trying not to stub myself in the process. Okay, you can see that coming through there. And the point this time is going to go downwards and through to the front like so Oops. I'm just going to push it down into that and then the female goes on top of that and I'm just going to manipulate this so that that sits in the cup of my tool Oops. <laughs> It's a bit fiddly but it's not that difficult. Okay, it's in. And when it is, squeeze nice and hard and there it is, all set. So now I can pop my book back in there. It's got a ribbon on this one that I don't intend to use. <laughs> I'm back in that. And 
there it is my notebook now as I said before you don't have to have both labels on there you can skip through them it's entirely your choice but um, I'm going to give this I think to a little girl and she's going to love the pocket on there I just wanted to show you how it was done okay I hope you enjoyed this stitch along if you did please give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new videos as they're published and thanks very much for joining me.